And a very happy morning to you. It's Saturday the 15th of July 2017. A warm welcome along, boys and girls, to today's United Kingdom talk. Well, we've been insulted already this morning. I've only been out of bed about an hour and a half. Insulted already on my own show by Wayne Martin. Some tin pot karaoke host somewhere in the southeast, boys and girls, who says, who says this morning on the subject of my interview, in, inter, interlude, no, in introduction music, five minutes of bad music. Don't you like it? Perhaps you'd like it all over again, would you? OK, then here he comes. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> do, 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 What's wrong? There's nothing wrong with my music in the first thing in the morning. There's nothing wrong with that music. It's you, dear. I suppose you're still playing that ghastly R&B stuff, are you, to your poor punters? They don't want that love. They don't want R&B. They want ABBA all night long. At least that's what those managers often tell you. You know the sort of managers that you work for as a DJ who are stuck in their youth and think everyone should still be listening to high energy. God's sake, the ones I've worked with those over the years. No idea at all. Anyway, we're out of the DJing now. No more DJing for me. Hurrah! Thank you very much. Unless I get a 70s and 80s sort of uh, special of perhaps a one-off there or something like that. Good morning to you, Wayne. Uh, good morning to uh, who's... Uh, let's, let's, let's do the messages early today, shall we? Rod Brown's there this morning. Good morning, Rod. Thank you, as always. Rod always shares my karaoke posts. I don't think I haven't noticed that, Rod. And I also like some of the other kind people on there. I know you share my shows to your wall as well, which is always very kind. Several people on there often share the wall, uh, share my shows to their walls. So thank you very much for that. It is appreciated. We're desperate for viewers here, dear. Desperate. There's more ants underneath one plant pot in my garden than there are viewers to this show. There are. Uh, Wayne says the garden's looking good, though. Well, I'd rather you like the music than the garden, to be honest. Nothing wrong with my music or the garden. Thank you very much. Did you see yesterday's gardening video? Not not a gardening video. Yesterday's video from the Savile Gardens. Nothing to do with Jimmy, dear. Don't worry. Nothing to do with Jimmy. The Savile Gardens in Windsor Great Park. I know a lot of you saw that. And uh, I got a few private messages about that one. So I'm glad you enjoyed that. I did notice on watching back, there seems to be a bit of a jerk with the camera. Did anyone else notice that? So when you're going slowly like this, you know, it go like that. It, it kind of go like that. Not that way. Only that way. So I'm going to test that out um, this afternoon on my own and see if, there's, if something's gone wrong with the camera there. Very odd. Never come across that before. What, it, it, if you keep it straight, no problem at all. If he goes that way, that's okay. But if you go left, there's like a jerk. Very like jerk chicken. Anyone like that? Jerk chicken. When I was when I was eating dead animals years ago, I went to Barbados and I had jerk chicken where it's done properly, you know. You can't do it here. I mean, honestly, dear, the English people trying to do this stuff, leave it to the Caribbean people, dear. We haven't got a clue, have they, dear? Absolutely, it's like going abroad and trying to get a decent cup of tea. No one can do it. Well, that's a slight lie. They can actually do it in the Caribbean countries and Australia. That's about it. Don't think you're going to get a decent cup of coffee, uh, a decent cup of tea in America, and certainly not in any of Europe. They, I think they do it purposely. The Europeans make bad tea just because they don't like us. That is, that is absolutely, that's got to be true, isn't it? <laughs> I'm sure it is. Good morning to Diane Jeb, who's with us this morning. Morning, Diane. Uh, Philip Ashcroft, Ashcroft is there. Hello, Phil. All right, hope you're well. Ray Reynolds is there this morning. Good morning, Ray. Hope your gig went well last night. I think Ray did a little gig last night. Um, Peter Hyde is there. Good morning, Peter. Uh, Rick Abbey, Stella. Hello, Stella. Uh, Andrew and Vectis. Everyone's there today. Good morning to you all. Welcome to our little show. Very strange journey I took to work last night, actually, to get to North London. OK, to get to North London, where I am uh, Mondays and Fridays and Saturdays at a central station in King's Cross. I came out of my house. I took the M3 to incorrect. Uh, uh, I took the M4 to the M25 and then the M25 right round to the M1, at which point I picked up the A1. 
There was a go to Holloway Road. Have you ever been to Holloway Road? Oh, Christ, that's frightening there. You know, avoiding the bags of acid <laughs> as I was driving through this part of London. What's all that about? I mentioned this a few weeks ago. People have started throwing, literally throwing bags of acid at people. You know, not ordinary people like, uh, not even terrorists. Um, what would you call them? Scumbags. Scumbags. Scumbags have started chucking random, and they seem to be on mopeds. I'd be very, very careful if you were a moped. And they're not exactly silent, are they, mopeds? Blooming noisy things. <laughs> Have you heard of mopeds? Ghastly machines, dear. So noisy. So, I mean, you, 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 you can easily hear them coming. But they're on mopeds and they go around, for some reason, chucking bag. But I don't know if they're plastic bags or... Well, it would be, I suppose. How, 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 actually, how comes the acid don't burn through the plastic bag? I never thought about that. How does that work then? If it burns your face, surely it must burn anything, doesn't it? Or maybe not. Maybe it just burns flesh. People have started chucking acid at people in the streets instead of knives. <laughs> I don't understand it. Why would you do that? Unless they're after like mobile phones and money and that sort of thing. And they say that you can buy this acid... In a supermarket. Well, I've never seen acid in a supermarket. Are they talking about bleach? Is bleach an acid? And perhaps you, you'll inform me about this, because I don't know anything about this. OK, there's a phone line open as well this morning, boys and girls. If you want... Oh, it's up there already. Oh, why is that phone number up there already? OK, 0208144 is my local London number. OK, 0208144 What is this acid that they're chucking at each other? Is it, like, and they say it's in, you can get it in a supermarket. Well, I've never gone in a supermarket and seen anything that says acid on the front. Oh, is it oven cleaner, actually? Because I know there's an oven cleaner that you can buy, and it, it comes with a bag. Now, what I think it's called Oven Pride. It comes with a bag, and you put all your things in it, put this liquid in it, seal the bag, shake it up and down, leave it for a while, take it out, and it's all clean again. But you've got to wear rubber gloves. Is it that stuff? This acid they're chucking at anyone? 0208 Now, I'm going to have to remove one of my cameras because there's something else that I've noticed that's bothering. It probably, you probably haven't even noticed this. OK, but occasionally the camera tries to refocus. Have you noticed that? Look, if I move forwards and backwards. <laughs> but, right. Is that? It's not doing it now, is it? Uh, hang on, let me get something. Oh, there we are. Let, let's... Um... Let's get this calendar. Now watch it. It's going to it'll try and refocus when I do this. Right, ready? Right, hang on a minute. Let that so focus. Well, that's focused there. No, it's not doing it now. Oh, how am I not? Oh, there you go. You see that? Did you see that refocus then? Now, it's got a little button that says turn off autofocus. But because there are two cameras exactly the same, namely this one, and that one over there, they're the same cameras. I'm unable to control that feature. Even though you untick the little box that says uh, stop autofocus, it doesn't do it because there's two cameras running the same software and they're exactly the same. So I've got to take one of those out of the circuit, I think, which is probably going to be the one over there. Although I will be able to switch the one over there, I reckon, with the one over there i think that will work so um i'll have to take that out because that's that's annoying me H had you not noticed that no one's mentioned it it's only me that notices these things isn't it god's sake it's just me uh good morning to uh the lovely shania on the isle of Wight. good morning shania uh john aitkin says morning chris can you please stop saying dead animals you're putting me off my bacon sandwich well it is well what is it then what is it then john you're eating a de you're having a dead animal sandwich that's exactly what you're eating this is why people eat dead animals, because they wrap it up in all sorts of other little words. Like, uh, although lamb, you know, I mean, that should be pretty obvious, lamb. How can you be taking little people round to farms? and Oh, look at the lovely horses. Oh, look at the cute lambs. And then you eat one. I don't understand it. 
You eat a lamb. After saying, oh, that's a cute little white fluffy lamb. And then you sit there and you eat one. Oh, no, dear. I'm sorry, John. I cannot... Uh, I cannot help your request there. It's a dead animal sandwich, and that's how it is. Whether it's a dead pig, which you're eating today, or a dead cow, moo, moo, or a dead lamb. It hasn't even lived its life, you evil person. Mind you, I'm just as guilty this morning. I've killed a moth. I have killed, I've noticed little moths in my house recently. I'm a bit concerned. There was one this morning crawling along the carpet. I carefully got a tissue and <laughs> squashed them down the toilet. Thank you very much. I don't like moths. I find them very worrying. They get in your cupboard. My friend Wayne Taylor, he got moths in his um, flat. He's got a, oh, he's got a beautiful flat uh, overlooking. Get this. Over, would you like to know what he, he can see out of his window? St. Paul's Cathedral. He can, and he's got a little roof garden out there as well. Wayne, he lives in um, Cannonbury. Oh, there's no way you could afford anything there, boys and girls. Not even to rent. But he lives in this place that he works. Oh, it's beautiful. And he's done it up so well. Lovely bathroom and all that business. Anyway, he had moths once in his house and they got into his cupboard and they were in his clothes. And you'd open the cupboard and all these moths would fly out. <laughs> Oh, don't laugh. It's not funny. Well, I keep finding them in the house, little little tiny ones. And I quickly, I either squash them, but that makes a mark on the wall that you have to clean off. Or I've got one of those little hoovers. You know the Dysons? And if you're quick, you get them. Same with spiders, same with flies. You can get them. I can actually catch a wasp mid-air with this thing. And it's gone. <laughs> is that as bad as eating dead animals? That's my question to you this morning. 0208 344 is my phone number. Uh, Ray Reynolds says, Johnny and I performed, Ray Reynolds plays ukulele with his uh, uh, very good friend and a uh, good friend of mine as well, Johnny Key, who's, who's a top man. He really is a top man, Johnny Key. Johnny and I performed George, for, George Formby songs together with opera singers in a charity show. The Concert Artists and Actors Club last night. Oh, did, did you get, um, uh, you might have got, um, uh, uh, did you see anyone famous there? You see, you see, I believe Ray Reynolds and Johnny Key, they're so good at playing this ukulele thing. I think they should be on the television variety show somewhere. But it's a case of being spotted. Now, I was having this conversation with Ray the other day. Years ago, there would be talent spotters. I don't think they exist anymore. And they would go around the country to various places um, looking for talent, like uh, uh, variety stars, singers, DJs, all that business. Now you've got to go to them. You know, oh, oh hello, Mr. Mr. ITV. Uh, uh, can I have a job, please? Oh, 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 no, Philip Schofield's doing everything this week. Oh, what about next week? No, it's Holly Willoughby next week. Oh, the week after? No, Ben Shepherd. It's just the same people all the time. So it's impossible to get in the door now. It really is. I know you'll find this very strange, but people have often said to me, why don't you get on radio? Because I don't know, I, I don't believe I can. And if you don't believe you can, that's it. It would take someone to come to me and say, hello, would you come and work, do, the, do a radio show for me? That's what it would take. I have no confidence in doing anything like that. Like that. But now we can all do it anyway. Ray Reynolds, if he wanted to, he could do a little daily show, a little camera in front of him, playing a ukulele, telling his stories. He'd be on the air for about 10 hours telling jokes, dear. <laughs> and that's what I can do in here, you see. It's so easy now. It, well, I say it's easy. Once you know exactly what you're doing, it is. Now, you know, sometimes things go wrong, as you well know. Uh, but you fix them eventually and, and, and you're back on again. And I haven't got an answer to anyone. <clears throat> There's no producer here telling me what to do, <coughs> not to not to do this, to do that, to do this. Oh dear! Why, why would why would I want that when I can sit here talking quite randomly and freely to you about my little thoughts <coughs> and items of news and things like that? Much better, much better. Ray says it's too too. F <coughs> <coughs> oh dear! I picked up a cough. Ray Reynolds says. Uh, it's sulf sulfuric acid. 
used as drain cleaning and sink cleaning. Easily available in B&Q and all household product shop. Oh, is that what it is? So that drain cleaning stuff, if you got that on your hand, that would burn you, would it? I didn't realise it was that dangerous. I've never used anything like that. I don't think I've ever had a drain block up. I don't have toilets block up. No, I don't. I mean, you've probably blocked your toilet up once or twice at home, haven't you, Ray? I can imagine that, dear. Dreadful, dreadful. Wayne is going now. Good. I'm glad you're going. Don't like my music? We don't want you here. Goodbye. <laughs> Hello to John Aitken. Says, uh, you're right, Ray. Yes, it's sul sulfuric acid. Yeah, I mean, uh, pretty nasty stuff. Nasty stuff. So avoid the acid. If you hear motorbike, uh, ga several motorbikes coming up behind you, look around. Because <clears throat> it could be people who are about to throw acid at you and try and rob your mobile phone. I think they got two teenage... I mean, teenagers, dear. Young people are doing this. I think they got two yesterday, didn't they? And they carted them off uh, for um, uh, for uh, for interviewing at the police station. Oh, talking about P Philip Schofield. Did you hear that yesterday? Uh, apparently this morning, which is not not one of our favourite programmes. It's one of those magazine programmes uh, in the morning. And uh, Philip, Philip and uh, and Holly, who do the job very well. They do their jobs very well. I'm just sick to death of seeing them on every single blooming programme. Perhaps one of them's going to be the new Doctor Who. Holly Willabooby as Doctor Who. <laughs> There's enough room in there for about six hearts in her chest, isn't there? God's sake, man. <laughs> anyway, uh, yesterday, apparently, they were doing this debt phone-in type thing. And someone, some uh, some woman rung in and her husband had left her and she was a £1,000 in debt and didn't know what to do. And Philip Schofield said, we well, take care of the bill. Isn't that, isn't that a top man? Yeah, see, there's nothing wrong with him. I'm just sick of seeing him on every blooming programme. Top man, top man to do something that for, for that uh, for someone. Wonderful. 0208 144 Did you, you saw that focus then, didn't you? You saw that then. Did you see it kind of go in and out a little bit? So I can put a stop to that by just removing one of the cameras. You won't even notice anyway. We hardly use it. Uh, morning to Matthew Joplin this morning. Morning, Matthew. Are you still doing your uh, mobile disco type thing? I know uh, that you went out and bought some equipment, and I, I think you've done one gig. Have you have you picked up any uh, <coughs> gigs and that on the mobile discos? Do let us know, okay? Let me have a look. Uh, so yes, I, I went a very w strange way to work last night. Round the M1, down the A1, down the Holloway Road, through North London, and, and round the back. Uh, so it must have been really, really busy on my normal routes in my sat nav. I use Waze now. It's completely free. I highly recommend it if you want a sat nav free of charge and you've got an iPhone. Or I think it works on Android as well. Download Waze. W-A-Z-E. Now, there's a lot of symbols on there that you'll have to get used to. I haven't found a list of Waze symbols yet. I've looked on the internet, and you would think there would be a list somewhere, wouldn't you, of Waze symbols. Can't find one anywhere, so uh, uh, you'll get, but you will get used to them. As the time goes on, you'll see. And what does that little number there written in red mean? It says nine. Uh, does that mean a nine-minute delay? Uh, but you're, you're moving. and if, Ah, it means nine miles an hour, that sort of thing. You know, and you can report things as well while you're on the move. But I'm not sure how that works legally because... Um, you have to touch the phone to do it. Now, I don't think you can touch the phone at all when you're in the car anymore. So I'm not quite sure how that um, how the um, <coughs> uh, legalities of that would actually work. I don't I don't bother. I just use it to drive around. Once I've set my thing, I don't need to touch it anymore. I've got hands three free thing in the car, as you well know. Um, so I just on the steering wheel while I'm driving, I can push a button and say, "Call, call." Uh, call Ray Reynolds and it rings his number. I haven't touched a thing. Did you? I bet you didn't even know that, Ray, did you? Oh, it's wonderful what they can do with modern technology these days. It really is. Um, so, got to work last night. The karaoke uh, was okay last night. Yeah, it wasn't too bad. Wasn't mega, mega busy, but I think we still had 16 or 17 singers last night. Most people sung three times. I think one or two people sung four times, so that was quite good. And uh, I know uh, Diane, for example, enjoyed a, a live karaoke stream last night, and uh, so I'm glad you enjoyed that, Diane. Uh, and then at one point, I thought I'd be clever with these maracas. 
and I'm playing my wood maracas, and then I chucked them up in the air like that, and one of them hit the little TV monitor, which is kind of behind the mic. You can't see it when you're watching the show. There is actually two TVs carrying the words to the songs. So when the singers come up, you don't need... If you've never been to a karaoke before, let me tell you, you don't need to know the words. The words to the songs come up on a little TV screen, and I've got two, one right next to the, to the singer, sort of at, um, at, at waist level, and there's another big one on a wall, just on the wall of, of, uh, of the venue. <clears throat> and the words come up there. So I'm being clever with these maracas, and I dropped one. And it hit the little telly, which instantly went off. I thought, oh, no, you know, another 150 quid down the drain just because of some foolishness that I have performed. Anyway, I've hit it on the top. I've hit it, hit it on the top like that. Because sometimes that works, doesn't it? As you well know, have you ever had something not working properly and you bang the top of it and it just bursts into life suddenly? I bet you have, haven't you? Well, I tried that one. It'll bang that, bang, knock the front of it. Wiggled the wire at the back. That's a good one. Wire wiggling. Wire wiggling is often a good way, boys and girls, to get your item working again. Although be very careful. When you're wire wiggling, make sure there's no bare wires there. You get electric shock. And if you are going to electrocute yourself, please video in it and send that into the programme. I'd be very happy to play that out. People would enjoy watching you suffer. Why do we like that? Why do we like watching people suffer? You've only got to find all these YouTube videos of people jumping out of planes and the parachute not opening. Ah, look, the parachute. And then they're flat on the floor dead. And you still laugh. What's all that about? Something very evil in the human mind, I think. It really is. Um, so, uh, could, I thought, oh, well, that's broken. Now, fortunately, we've still got the other telly working on the other wall, so we had to use that. It, this happened in the last half an hour of the uh, show last night anyway. And um, <clears throat> so I've wrapped this thing up, took it home with me. And this morning I've gone downstairs after I got cleaned up after the cat, cat poo all over the kitchen floor. It's not over the kitchen floor. It's on the paper on the kitchen floor because I've got an area of the kitchen covered in paper, you see. She, she goes on there. The only thing is now, now you know I've got an incontinent cat. She's now starting to sit in it herself. She doesn't, I don't know whether it comes out when she's, when she's asleep or something like that. But, um, yes, it, she's um, uh, uh, becoming even a little bit more messy than she was. And she sits in it. So what I do when I get up in the morning, that's the first thing I have to do. I, 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 I open the kitchen door very slightly. and have a sleep. Oh, oh, yeah, she's been. Right, I then rush over to the back door, unlock it and throw that open. I pick the cat up and put her in the garden. And then I open the front door and I collect up all the paper. And then it goes in the bin outside, you see. And that kind of works. And very the, the smell disappears very, very quickly. But it is it is a mess. I've got the front of my um, fridge and dishwasher covered in, like, this special paper. Because sometimes, I don't know how she does it, she flicks it up. And God, God knows what I'm going to do if it ends up on the ceiling. Uh, and I have to do that two or three times a day now. But um, this week, she, she 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 would she used to go and she'd walk around and round on it and then she'd go to sleep somewhere. Now, I don't know, it just seems to be there. Perhaps it's come out while she's asleep or something. I don't know, I don't know. Uh, my friends at, um, uh, at the quiz night at the King's Head Theatre Bar, uh, I think it was Bruce actually, Bruce talking to me this week. Have I put that light on? Yeah, I have. <clears throat> it was Bruce who comes. It was his birthday yesterday, so we'll sing happy birthday to Bruce later. He thinks I'm being cool now and uh, I should uh, go to the vet. But um, it's very difficult. You know, it's very difficult to do that. But we'll we're, we're, we're see. We'll see. Uh, John says, can you get cat nappies? Well, <laughs> I don't know, actually. You probably can. I bet you can. You know, you, I, can, I know you can get chicken nappies. Absolutely. Chicken nappies. And you put them on the back of the birds. <laughs> With a cat, it's a different thing altogether, isn't it? Because if you if if you caught it in an appy, then it would go, go all over her fur, wouldn't it? Mind you, she's sitting in it at the moment. So, I mean, it, it does. And so I clean that up. Then I go outside, outside and she's got her own, like, washing up bowl now. And I put a little bit of hand sanitizer, nice, rosy, smelly stuff that I got from Waitrose. 
uh, the other day. I put that in there, ruffle it up so there's bubbles, and I take that outside, and I literally dunk my cat in it. Not her head, no, just it comes up about that far up her little feet like that. I dunk them, and I, I shuffle them around like that, and it shakes off most of the stuff that's on her paws. <laughs> And then I've got a, I've got a packet of J cloths and I take out a new J cloth and then I literally and she struggles at first but then she lets you do it. I hold one paw like that and I'm like that with the J cloth, you know, just get under the nails and all her feet and the back of her legs as well. So I, I do the best I can for her. So that's what I've done this morning. Uh, I've got some plants to put in. Plants to put in to, uh, uh, later on after the show today, which I bought at uh, Windsor Great Park yesterday. We were doing the uh, video, as I said at the beginning of the show, at Savile Gardens uh, yesterday in Windsor Great Park. If you like flowers and you want a really relaxing day, I highly rec recommend that as a day out. If you come on holiday to the country, uh, to this country, get yourself a train uh, or, a, or a bus to, uh, to Windsor. And you'll probably have to get a cab from there to uh, the uh, Savile Garden at Windsor Great Park. And it's for £10.50, you know. That's very good value for money. Just £10.50 and you can be there all day for that. There's somewhere to eat, nice cups of tea and all that. Really, 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 really nice day out it is. Uh, so I bought about three plants from there. And they're waiting to go in outside. They're not the only plants I bought today. Oh, no. Because I got a special offer, boys. A special offer into my email from Sutton Seeds. 36 perennials. <clears throat> recommended retail price, £251.64. Price for 36 perennial, perennials. Was it 36? 36 perennials. 20 quid. 20 quid. And they come in 9 centimetre pots. They've all been chopped down, you know, had the flowers removed so that you'll get another display this year. And this is the way to do, <clears throat> this is the way to do uh, gardening. Don't buy bedding plants, buy perennials because they come back year in, year out. None of this spending so much every year. Uh, so they're on the way. I bought £20, has got me all those plants. And I bought another £20 for my mate because he's very much into gardening. Although he hasn't got much, he's got no space for plants. I don't know where he's going to put them. But if I buy them for myself, oh, you could have got me some. So I did. Oh, no, I ain't nice. But don't, wouldn't you want me as your friend, you see? So generous and kind. Oh, thank you, Wayne. He wants to know, is your karaoke TV working? Yeah, I, I went off that subject then, didn't I? Sorry. Uh, yes, it is. So I wrapped the thing up, took it home, plugged it in, still didn't work. And I'm touching the button. And then I saw a little label right at the bottom near the on-off button. And it says switch underneath. And underneath there's a little switch, a rocker switch. And I went click and on it came. So obviously what happened when I dropped the maraca onto it, I I I uh, I knocked the switch on the little TV monitor that was sitting down there. I thought I'd broken it, but no, I just knocked the switch off. So it is working now. Thank you very much, Wayney. Were well, you going to offer me one? Hey, uh, he don't miss a he don't miss a trick, does he? Just about to sell me one of his overpriced second-hand TV sets. I think. Were you, Wayney? You dodgy old thing. You really are, dear. So that was the uh, karaoke last night, and a nice night was had by all. Very, very nice last night Nights in there uh, last night. Mary, non-Irish Mary from Ireland, was in there last night. And she, <clears throat> I don't know where she'd been, but she had her face painted like a tiger, like a cat. And, of course, she'd done her pussycat song, Stray Cat Strut, or Strut Stray Cat, or something like that, wasn't it? Yeah. So that was excellent. Uh, good morning to Alan. Morning, Alan. Uh, we had a lovely night last night. Yeah, Alan popped along last night and uh, he sang us a couple of songs. So a very good morning to you, Alan. Nice to see you, sir. Nice to see you uh, Sunday as well. I think you're coming Sunday this week for the first time, aren't you? Our next karaoke, boys and girls, is at the Camden Eye in Camden Town. That's tomorrow night, every Sunday, 8 p.m. till 11 p.m. Camden Eye, karaoke eye, tomorrow night, 8 till 11 o'clock at the Camden and I in Camden. You come out the station, Finchley Roadside, cross over the road, you're there. 10 seconds from the station exit. Five seconds if you run. 20 seconds if you do pigeon steps. Do you remember doing pigeon steps at school? <laughs> I'm sure you do. Now, Doctor Who fans, 
But don't worry, I'm not about to give anything away. Okay, oh, who's this calling in now? Just a moment. One moment, please. Good morning, Rodney. Oh, well, that's good news. Well, I'm just doing one of my shows at the moment, so I'll have to call you a bit later, dear. I shall. Please do. Please do. <laughs> Bye. There's our mate Rodney. He was there as well last night. Right, Doctor Who news. Don't worry. If you're a Doctor Who fan, I would never dream of revealing any of the stories or anything like that. When I see all that advertised, usually in the star, you know, they tell you what's going to happen in Doctor Who, EastEnders, whatever. Someone finds out and they tell you. I think that's great. It really spoils it for a lot of people, including me. So I never read these things. Here we go. So tomorrow... Uh, a trailer featuring the number 13 in different locations was aired during the tennis on BBC One Colour on Friday. It finished with the caption, Meet the 13th Doctor after the Wimbledon men's final on Sunday the 16th of July. Uh, Peter Capaldi made the announcement during an interview with BBC Radio 2 presenter Joe Whitley in January. Uh, that he was leaving, <clears throat> the Glasgow-born star said, I feel it's time to move on. I feel sad. I love Doctor Who. It's a fantastic programme to work on. Now, you see, Peter Capaldi was my favourite Doctor Who ever since it restarted uh, with Christopher Eccleston. Do you know that was eight years ago? Doctor Who has been back on our screens for about eight years now. Isn't that unbelievable? Where's that gone? I keep saying this, don't I? You know, time moves faster and faster and faster. Especially this year. My God! You know, July, August, September. Oh, I, I, you know, and it's nearly a, the summer. The summer, dear. Winter and soon. I hate winter. I hate it. Um, <clears throat> and I'm sad that he's leaving. I, I, I wish he was staying for a lot longer, Peter Capaldi. But he's not and we're getting a new one. Um, the locations in the trailer included 10 Downing Street and the White Cliffs of Dover. There'll be bluebirds over the White Cliffs of Dover. Yes, uh, and the Statue of Liberty as well. The popular sci-fi series featuring a Time Lord known only as the Doctor who travels through time and space in the TARDIS, which resembles a 1960s police telephone box. The main character has the ability to regenerate, a quirk that has allowed a number of actors to have played the role over the years. Peter Capaldi, who replaced Matt Smith. Now, he wasn't... I didn't like Matt Smith. He wasn't my doctor at all. Uh, I don't mean he's not a bad actor. It just wasn't, wasn't for me, that particular part. Uh, Peter Capaldi, who replaced Matt Smith as a doctor, was previously best known for his role as foul-mouthed spin doctor Malcolm Tucker in the BBC series The Thick of It. So we're going to find out tomorrow, after the men's final one, BBC One Colour, who will be the new doctor. How exciting is that? Um, uh, 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 yes, you love it, don't you? Uh, Alan says, did you know the song Time to Say Goodbye came out 20 years ago? Every time. That's not the one, is it? Time to Say Goodbye. Andrew Bacelli, B Bacelli and Sarah Brightman. I've got a lovely song by Sarah Brightman called Him. Do you know that one? Him. And it, it, it was based on a hymn. You know, a hymn in church. Would you like to hear a little bit of it? It's very nice. One moment, please. Uh, hymn, isn't it? Hymn, Sarah Brightman. Let me let me locate that in my vast array. One minute. Hymn. Now, the song itself is actually quite difficult to get hold of. I have to tell you that. Um, I bought it as a 45 on eBay. And that's how I managed to get... I had it years and years ago. When I was married, uh, we lived in Battersea in a, a block of flats, uh, St. George's House, Charlotte Despard Avenue. That's where we lived in Battersea. 
And I used to have this on my little Walkman. I didn't have a Sony Walkman. We didn't have a lot of money, so I didn't have a Sony Walkman, just a, a little tape cassette thing. And I used to have this on blasting in my ears when I used to go to work at uh, Wimbledon Directory Inquiry Bureau, part of British Telecom, in um, in Warple Road in Wimbledon. And I used to have this on. Here's a little, here's a little snippet of it. You'll like this. A thousand ways the nights help me to And it lovely I talk him It's the chorus Right here comes the big instrumental bit or oh, uh, is this now Oh, let me move on to the intro. I've got a marvellous Andrew Lloyd Webber, you see. Got a marvellous instrumental bit. I've got. Let me play you the instrumental bit. It's just beautiful. Very, very orchestral. Here it goes. You ready? Here we go. Beautiful. Oh, he's bringing tears to my eyes. To me, I dreamed all night of him. I dreamed all night of him. I don't know if it's available on YouTube. It might be available on YouTube. Um, So please do have a listen to that later. It is spelt H-I-M. Shania says she loves that hymn. Once you've heard it, Shania, you'll want to sing sing the hymn like she sings the song. It's really, really nice. So it's called Him, H-I-M, by Sarah Brightman. I can't play you the whole thing because um, uh, copyright things will probably cut me off halfway through the show. That that's happens, unfortunately. All right. But Him, H-I-M, by Sarah Brightman. Check it out. See if it, uh, let, let me see if it's on YouTube. Hang on. I'm telling you to do my own job here, and I. Hang on a minute. <coughs> I'll see if it's on there for you, and then, and then at least you'll know. It's him, Sarah, right, man. It's there. Oh, no, it's not. I don't know how to love him. No, it's not there. It's not there. Look at that. Huh. Well, I, I don't know where you're going to hear that then. Uh, oh, hang on a minute. Him, Sarah, right, man. It's not on YouTube. Surprising, isn't it? Ah, oh, it, it's on. There's one on Vimeo. Vimeo, is it? What's that Vimeo? Let's see if that works. Let's have a listen. Him. No, that's not the whole thing. There's a little bit of it on Vitmo. If you type into Google, maybe you've, you'll have a little bit more time than me. Uh, him lyrics, him. Sarah Brightman. Watch music clip. You see, it just says music clip. What's this? Thing? What's that jukebox? I don't know what that is. Ju- watch jukebox. Music clip. No, nothing happening there. Either. Oh, hang on. Does that work? Oh, I said, uh, no, I don't know. Type into Google, have a look, look yourself. Him, H-I-M by Sarah Brightman. And that really is a, a, a lovely song. Now, how did we get onto the subject of that? <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm not quite sure how we got onto that. Where were we? Someone tell me where we were, because I can't remember what I was saying now. Him, Sarah Brightman, church. Oh, God. Oh dear. No, I've lost. I've lost. I've lost my place in the queue. I was sorry. You've now lost your place in the queue. You'll have to go back to the beginning all over again. I don't think so. We're not going back to the beginning all over again, are we? No, we certainly not. Uh, Doctor Who. Thank you, Doctor Who. That was it, Doctor Who. So we look forward to finding out who is the Doctor Who, the new Doctor Who tomorrow after the Wimbledon's men's final. 
Okay, good. Uh, some news stories. Don't forget, there's a phone line if you want to call in this morning at 0208 144 is my phone number. Now, I don't know how you feel about cash. I don't want to be cashless. You know, I quite like sometimes being paid in cash at work. It's nice to have that feeling of cash. I know a lot of young people now, they don't bother with cash at all. They just get a bit of plastic out and do that. But I don't think you can keep um, a, an exact idea in your head how much money is going in and out. I know a lot of people that don't check their bank statements at all. My aunt is one of them. She never, ever checks her bank statement. She's no idea what's going in or going out. And I, to me, that's that's really criminal. I know exactly what's going in and out all the time. But I still like the idea of cash. Well, look at this. Visa, this is in this morning's sun. Visa is reportedly planning to wage war on cash by paying British businesses to start refusing coins and notes. The payments giant will soon try and strike deals with shops and restaurants worth thousands of pounds and free to use uh, and free use of contactless technology. Because I think at the moment, uh, every time you use your card or something like that, I believe the shop gets charged a small amount. I'm sure that's the case. In return, British shop owners must ensure all customers pay with debit cards credit cards or digital payments like Apple Pay. Visa's chief executive, Alf Kelly, vowed to put cash out of business. UK retailers currently spend £800 million a year on transaction fees for over £10 billion worth of card payments, according to the Daily Telegraph. Earlier this week, research from the British Retail Consortium also found transactions made with debit cards had overtaken cash for the first time, making it number one form of payment in the UK. Uh, they said that the overall card payments now account for more than half of all retail uh, purchases. So it is already happening. You know, it's already happening. You're already starting to mainly pay with cash. A study came less than a month after Barclay Card's contactless spending index revealed that card payments rose by more than a third in the last year, becoming the UK's favourite way to pay for goods. Many retailers now accept new payments, uh, which uh, payment methods, which allow people to pay for their mobile phones like a wallet, such as Apple Pay, Android Pay, Samsung Pay. But critics slammed Visa for bribing British businesses. James Daly, director of cons uh, consumer group, uh, Visa appears to be bribing companies to stop using cash. It should be remembered that many of the people who rely on cash are the most vulnerable in society. And um, I've got to say, good morning, Nathan. Welcome along, Nathan. I've got to say, I don't like, um, I've, I've not got an Apple Pay or anything like that. With large purchases, I use my Visa card. And I... Um, I know in my head, I have to say, I'm kind of contradicting myself from earlier here, saying that people, a lot of people don't check their bank statements. I mean, they really don't. They don't check their bank statements, their credit card statements or anything. They have no idea what's in and what's out. I know exactly what's in and what's out all the time. But um, I, I would be very disappointed to see the disappearance of cash. You know, and how would that work, for example, in a church? Would the priest go around with a little card swiping machine? How much today? Oh, just five pounds today, Father. And he would go, or would they know, wouldn't they, how much you're putting in? <clears throat> I don't want people to know what I'm putting in my church collection box. And there's an example there. And window cleaners. You know, window cleaners and, as we're saying, one of these little card swiping machines, easy to damage, isn't it? You know, your window cleaner comes around, you give him, I don't know, 10 quid or whatever. He puts it in his pocket, off he goes. I reckon a lot to do with this is people that, um, I suppose, are uh, they want to get the, the tax from people, you know. But I mean, how much, how much tax can a window cleaner uh, can, owe? How much tax can the bloke in the street who's fixing cars, how much can he owe? Not as much as Starbucks or people like that, but they all get away with it, don't they? Google, Facebook, they're all at it. What do they pay in tax? A very, very small amount. 
and yet they go after the small person all the time, don't they? I'd be very, very disappointed to see the uh, disappearance of uh, credit cards. Do you use credit cards? Do you use cash at all anymore? Let me know. 0208 344 is my phone number. What do you think? Do you think we should get rid of cash altogether? I like a bit of cash in my pocket, don't you? Who wants to go and buy, I don't know, buy a bag of crisps or a can of Coke? Oh, there's my card. Oh, what? Just give them the money. This is why the, the, the supermarkets have always got queues. It's always these people with cards, isn't it? Put it, tap, 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 tap. Oh, it hasn't worked. Oh, you know, queue building up behind. Try it again. Oh, it doesn't work. Let's try another card. Queue building up even further behind them. Not me, mate. There's me 50 quid. There you go. Out of the door. No more mucking around with cash, with, with blooming cards and all that. So I think uh, it's a terrible thing. Now, now Visa, uh, as I say, is bribing shops. They're offering like thousands of pounds, according to the story in the Daily Mirror, for shops not to take cash anymore. Now, they may well be doing this free of charge. All your transactions will all be free. Oh, thank you very much. They may well start doing that. But I can guarantee you, I absolutely guarantee you, once the cash has gone, they will start putting their fees back on again. That's what it's all about. It's, a, it's known as a loss leader. It's like when you go into a supermarket, you see you know, a packet of chocolate biscuits for five pence. Wow, how did they do that like that? Oh, we'll have some of those. Oh, I might as well do the rest of my shopping while I'm in here. That's what all that's about, you see. It gets them in the door. I've tried all sorts of things to get people through this door here. But nothing's working at the moment. So very, very interesting on that cashless thing, really is. Uh, another couple of stories here. Sunita. Toy boy, toy boy. Well, this again, uh, this one's in the sun this morning. Sunita has been axed from Celebrity Big Brother lineup. Well, who's going to watch that anyway? There's no one watching this one. Apparently. Did you hear the news? The, the, the story I read out, was it last Saturday? They have this eviction thing where people vote people out of the programme, OK? And I think it's live and it's on Friday nights, I believe. I don't, I'm not 100% sure about what I'm talking about here because I don't watch trash television like that. It's ghastly people in there shouting and screaming and swearing and doing uh, 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 to each other. <laughs> That's all it is. Well, Sunita was going to be on Celebrity Big Brother, but show bosses refused to meet her list of diva demands. So let's see what these were. According to the Daily Star, show sources have revealed that her ridiculous list of requests, including a bodyguard with her at all times, including when she was asleep, became too much to accommodate her. I mean, I'm not being funny. She's all right, Sunita. I quite like her songs. But she's not like a massive, massive star, is she? Come on. She's not like, you know, like ABBA. She's not like... Justin Bieber. She's not like the great Barry Manilow. It's just Sunita. Who's good at singing? She's a happy person. I like her. But she's not like, you know, Shirley Bassey, is she? You know what I'm saying? The source told the paper, we were thrilled to get Sunita on board as she is a laugh. There you go. And she could let slip some embarrassing secret about Simon Cowell. Oh, we're so interested in that, aren't we? Oh, but our demands were the most ridiculous we've ever seen. The So Macho singer had previously revealed to OK Magazine that she was in negotiations with the Channel 5 show ahead of the summer series, which starts in early August. But even she admitted that at the time they were having trouble bending to her wants. She told the magazine, I've given them my rider. Now, the rider, a rider is a list of things that an artist wants before they go and perform. I just asked for a few things that would make it nice because they've asked me to do it every year and I've always said no. But these things could happen. Then I could do it. <laughs> Opening up about her particular requests, she revealed that she wanted her puppy to come along and visit her. Woof, woof. <laughs> Sunita, who's 53, added, I also want a swearing ban because I don't swear and people shouldn't be allowed to swear at me or around me. I asked a bodyguard who would stand with me at all times, especially when I'm asleep. 
If they provide alcohol, then I want tequila because it's all I drink. Quite reasonable, really. The producer said it's the most ridiculous rider they'd ever had. It's all got a bit quiet, I must admit. But if you don't ask, you don't get. <laughs> so I don't think she's going to be on. <laughs> Will you miss her? That's the question. Will you miss Sunita not being on there? Oh, I don't know. Hello to Jay Wright. Hello, Jay. Haven't you seen for a while? Greetings, Jay. Welcome to our little chat show. All right. John says we've got contactless cards much quicker. Uh, oh, what, when you touch that little thing. Yeah, but not many people seem to do that. Certainly not in the supermarket. They prefer to put the button in. I wouldn't want to just touch something. I really wouldn't. I'd be worried that extra money was coming out my account all the time. I don't like it, dear. Stick with the money. Stick with the money. That's what we've got to do. Right, we'll do one more story, boys and girls, and uh, then we'll wrap up and do the birthdays today. Uh, now, you probably know I'm, I'm a big fan of talk, talking, talking, like talk radio. LBC, there's some people I like on LBC. Uh, I've mentioned to you them several times before. My favourite, of course, Steve Allen. Uh, just hilarious. Steve Allen is fantastic. He's on LBC uh, Monday to Friday, at 4 till 6 a.m. And he's on at the weekend. I think he's on every day, actually, doing something. Uh, I like Nick Abbott on LBC. I like Clive Bull on LBC. Uh, I'm not keen on several people on there. Oh, I, f I can't even remember his name now. That's how unkeen I am on other people there. Oh, we've got a call coming in. Let's take a call. Uh, uh, yes. Good morning, Adam the Plumber. Hello. Hello. Oh, that's not, oh, working, that's working, not is working, is it? No, nope. can, can only hear myself on that one. How strange and mysterious that was. That didn't work, did it? I've got the right button up. Yeah, I did have the right button up. That, that's happened before with his phone. That's happened before with his phone. Yes, I'm a big fan of talk radio. Well, uh, Spectrum, which is an AM station in London, is the story. London AM station Spectrum Radio on Medium Wave has applied to Ofcom for a major change in format and would like to be known as Spectrum Talk. It wants to move away from it wants to move from a service aimed at various different ethnic minority communities in London to an all speech service for Londoners focuses on, on business and finance, sport, entertainment, current affairs and essential information. Spectrum Radio originally launched in 1990 and has a measured coverage of 10,433,014. I don't know how they get the exact figures like that. Adults age 15 plus. It currently identifies itself as Europe's leading ethnic radio group. But they want to move to a uh, 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 just an all talk format. I suppose similar to LBC and talk radio. And I'm all for that. You know, even though, even though they were that they would be doing the same thing. You would have different presenters. You know, if if I was talking about um, <clears throat> what I think of politics and there was another show on exactly at the same time on another programme talking about politics, the two programmes would be completely different, even though we're doing the same subjects because it's a different person. So I'm all for that, all for that. What I'd like to see and hear uh, on, on the radio... Uh, and indeed, YouTube and things like that are more people doing this sort of thing. Yeah, I'm I'm a character, really, aren't I? I'm a, like a character. I would like to hear more characters on the radio talking about their everyday lives and what they do. I think that would be very interesting, excellent. You know, personalities, not just reeling out the blooming news read from a piece of paper all the time. I want to hear a bit of character, character in someone's voice. And I'd like to hear that on, on the radio as well. I really would. So I think that would be an excellent, uh, uh, another talk station, be it only in London, but nevertheless, another talk station. Now, you go to other countries, America and Australia in particular. I know those two because I've been so many times. There are hundreds of talk stations doing all sorts of stuff. And it's absolutely fascinating. Of course, uh, with internet radio, which I'm sure you're aware of, you can listen to these stations anywhere. There's an excellent app for the uh, uh, mobile phone called Tune In Radio, which I've got here. Um, and I'll just um, I'll just uh, bring that up there. 
let's have a look. Tune in radio. Okay, so that, that, I don't, you probably won't. Oh, you can. Now, tune in radio. You see that? Tune in radio. Okay. That brings up a list of stations there. And I can search talk. T A L K. Just type search. And up comes. Oh, is that Radio City Talk? Is that English? Oh, it is that English? Radio City Talk? Let's have a listen. Do you have a listen? It's now you're going to work time. Maybe it's your coming home time. Or if you're enjoying your new time, well, it could be the perfect time for you. That's that sometimes. Yeah, that that sounds English. So that's that's another talk station. Oh right, okay. So that must be in the UK. So I didn't know that one. I'll I'll save that one and have a little listen to it. Um. Yes, in Australia and America, there are hundreds and hundreds of talk stations they've got and, and every subject you could possibly want. And I like to listen to characters and all about their lives. And I think in this country, we, we could do with a lot more talk stations doing various different things. Wouldn't you like to uh, hear that? Rather than the same old blooming songs coming out on music, radio, all the time, it's just oh so boring, it really is. So I think that's excellent news and I hope they get that. Uh, John says you'll get sent a text to tell you how much and where you were. Uh, oh, what? When you're on them, um, when you use a contactless card. Do you really? Hello, Adam. Hope you're well, Adam. I didn't know that. I really didn't know that. Gosh. Well, there you go. I mean, I haven't got my, my contactless thing set up. I haven't even got mine set up. Yeah, you know, unless you, you, you use it the first time, you have to put your pin in so then and then it starts working, doesn't it? Well, I've never done that. I, I, I don't use my debit card like that. I don't, don't like the contactless thing. All righty, uh, let's do the birthdays. Now, we've got today's birthdays and yesterday's birthdays as well, of course, because we weren't here yesterday. Happy birthday today to Ray Barron. Happy birthday, Ray. Have a nice time today. Uh, Louisa King, you're right, darling. Lippy Lou, another year's passed since I last sang happy birthday to you, Louie. Can you believe that? Where's the time go? You're looking particularly beautiful at the moment, I have to say, my darling. Happy birthday to you. Uh, Matt King. Uh, DJ? I think you're DJ. Aren't you DJ, Matt? I'm sure I've met you maybe only once. A long, uh, uh, a while, well, it's a number of years ago now, was it? Ah, you were Grant's friend, weren't you? I've got you now. Happy birthday, Matt. All right, happy birthday, Matt. Uh, Dave Anthony Downing is 49 years old today. Happy birthday, Dave. Orlando Tyrelli. What a name, Tyrelli. Is it Italian? It sounds a wonderful surname that you've got. Happy birthday to you. Uh, Craig Daniel. Oh, well, happy birthday, Craig. Massive DJ. He used to run a Tracks record store as well uh, down in Soho. It's his birthday today. I haven't seen you for years and years, Craig. Happy birthday to you, sir. I don't do the DJing anymore. I do. I just do uh, karaoke, quiz nights, and a little bit of hosting, which I do on Saturday night at Central Station, which involves playing records. It's not really DJing, though. I came out of all that. Happy birthday, Craig. Uh, only about four weeks ago now. Uh, happy birthday to Andy uh, Jamel Smith. Uh, George Reese is 30 years old today. Happy birthday, George. You're right, sir. I haven't seen you for ages. Last time I saw you, you popped into the cherry tree, didn't you? That's a couple of years ago. Happy birthday to George. There today's birthdays. I'll do uh, yesterday's birthdays as well because uh, we weren't here yesterday. And yesterday, uh, just a few. Oh, quite a few. Actually, quite a few yesterday. Right, Bruce Jordan. That's funny. Uh, Bruce was the chap I was talking to you about uh, who comes along to the uh, quiz night on Wednesdays at the King's Head Theatre Bar. Happy birthday for yesterday, Bruce. Uh, Peter Geronimo. Happy birthday, Peter. Where have you been hiding? Anthony Mooland. Very, very smart. You're looking in that scarf and that. Happy birthday, Anthony. Tristan Williams. Tristan, I worked with uh, for a few years at Belushi's in London Bridge. One of my favourite jobs of all time. I hope you're doing well there, Tristan. I really do. All right, happy birthday to you. Uh, Debbie Hall, singer Debbie Hall. Happy birthday, Debbie. She's a barrel of laughs, she is. I've worked with her a few times, and uh, she's great fun. Debbie Hall, happy birthday. Christopher Watkins, who plays the violin. Again, worked with him quite a few times. And it's an electric violin. He plugs it in, and it's, he does wonderful things with that instrument. Wonderful things. Happy birthday, Christopher. Uh, Craig Ryan, DJ Craig Ryan. Happy birthday, Craig. Uh, Julian Rees 
Gonzalez. I love that name, Gonzalez. Happy birthday, sir. Aidan uh, McCabe down there in Ealing. Happy birthday, Aidan. Uh, it was drag queen Sandra's birthday yesterday. Christ, she looks old now, doesn't she? Dear me, how old do you look now? Blimey, Sandra. Sandra is now about 250 years old. Happy birthday, Sandra. And Twinkle Boy, uh, Sicone. I think, is it Sicone or Sicone? Happy birthday to you as well. Let's uh, uh, sing the song then. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. All right. Have a last birthday, boys and girls, whatever you're doing today. Uh, tonight, I'll be hosting Cabaret tonight. Uh, we've got Vicky Vivacious, an excellent uh, cabaret performer for you this evening. That's at Central Station in Wharfdale Road, King's Cross. Show starts at 10.30. I'm there from 9.30, just playing a few tunes and uh, doing a little bit of chat and playing requests and things like that. So that's at Central Station tonight. Don't forget, uh, our next karaoke is tomorrow night. That's Sunday night, each and every Sunday night at the Camden Eye in Camden Town between 8 o'clock and... I say 11. It's about a quarter to 11. So between 8 o'clock and uh, 10.45 is karaoke tomorrow night. Um, why, why? I've forgotten to switch that over, haven't I? I'm looking over here and you're there. I'm looking over there and you're there. Yeah, and it's... Is it 12 o'clock already? Good God, I better put my dinner on. Uh, yes, uh, 8 till 10.45 uh, tomorrow is the karaoke at the Camden Eye. Enjoy your Saturday and thank you very much for joining us on the show this morning and I'll see you again soon. Cheerio now. <laughs>